with Call is Lester. I'm Johnny from DMAs before our show at the O2 Academy tonight. What are your top three plans for 2019? Um, well, in January, we're going to be playing uh, a whole bunch of festivals in Australia over New Year's, uh, one being the Falls Festival, um, and then and another one that's uh, called Grow Your Own, which is in Foster, which is put on by our mate Jack River. Um, and then hopefully going to do another fair few months of writing and maybe get the last few songs ready and then release a single, I guess, hopefully by the end of next year and um, keep the momentum up with music. <laughs> if, if you were to go on a reality TV show, which would you choose? Um, I don't know. It definitely wouldn't be like X Factor or something like that. Because I can sing in tune, but it's not, it's not great. Um, do you know what? There was a show in Australia, which I don't know if they've done before. Well, again, but it was called Band in the Bubble. And it was done by this band Regurgitator. And basically, they set them in like a glass kind of house slash recording studio in the middle of Melbourne CBD. Oh, um, yeah. And basically you could come by there any time, but basically, and they were, I think they were in there for like a month or something and they made a record like, you know, completely live. It was kind of like Big Brother or something like that. But like some bad time. version. Pun? Sounds like Urban X Factor. It's more entertaining because it's like, well, from a musician's point of view, yeah. seeing them record and all the gear and stuff. Mm -hmm. Other than, you know, I think there's a lot hidden in the X Factor stuff. So yeah, probably that, because I, I don't know, I'd be pretty useless at like one of those ones where they just chuck you in the middle of the jungle or something like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> what interview question are you sick of answering? Um, well, it's a bit harsh to kind of say that, because you start thinking about how many times you've been asked like that. Not that question, but probably one for me, which I'm a little bit done with because I think people already know the answer they just want you to say it is kind of asking the difference between um, different crowds which seems a bit like I don't know crowds are pretty like they can be pretty I don't know basically the further north you go the rowdier they get I think everyone kind of knows that festival in the world. Uh, one of my favourite ones was, um, there's one called Oshega, I believe it's pronounced, and it's in Montreal, in Canada, and the catering is crazy. They fly in all these like chefs from all around the world and Europe, and you're literally walking through the catering and there's like, just like a rotisserie over here and then just like sushi and like the best burger you've ever seen and just like desserts bar and yeah that was definitely a highlight for me so i'll probably pick that for now what is your favorite city in the world probably because i haven't been there as much and it's always a freak out tokyo just love the japanese people love the uh it's quite a different way of life and i love the food and got heaps of great synthesizers there and lots of great record stores and curious clothing curious fashion which I like as well Ooh, what is your go-to hangover cure um, it's probably different to like actually it's not too different when we're touring in the UK we quite often try and go and get a big like Turkish grill the big mix girl, <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty good. Um, and obviously another, the hair of the dog, I guess. Um, what is your favorite buffet item? This is my favorite question. Yeah, this is a, <laughs> this is a pretty good, this is a good one. 
Um, what kind of buffet are you talking about? Like you get like a wedding. Okay. Or a party. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I'm pretty into like, I don't know, like, you know those little duck pancake things you get? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they go pretty well, I reckon. Um, yeah, or, or oysters, actually. If, if, like, the, yeah, 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 yeah. It's either that or like mac and cheese, like if you go up to, a, you know, the bayonet or whatever. But I wasn't quite sure what buffet you were quite talking about. But it's probably something like that. I'm a big seafood fan. Um, who's the best band you have ever performed alongside? We did a, um, we did a gig actually, I nearly missed it. Me and Mason were, were on a different flight and that flight got delayed. But it was in Chicago and we performed with TV on the radio. And that was a pretty special one. Um, cause they're, you know, just such a great kind of culty band. And, um, and we hadn't really spent any time in America or anything like that, so the whole experience was just pretty special. Uh, tour bus or hotel? Um, probably for me the tour bus, actually. Because I find that checking into a hotel is a real shit fight. You know what I mean? It's like taking your bags off the bus, wait around, check in, take it upstairs. You know, I prefer to just go to bed in my nice little bunk with my little powerpoint, my little window, my little like closet thing, you know what I mean? That's definitely, that's definitely probably my pick actually. Probably just purely out, out of laziness. Though, if you spent like four days on the bus, it's nice to have a hotel for a night and have a proper shower and stuff. Cause I can get weird. Last one. Mm. Favorite song to play live. Uh, so I think for me it always changes, but at the moment, um, oh, I know, we've been doing a version of a song of ours called The End. No one should feel my eye. no one should feel my goal, and I just can't describe how I got so cold, and I can't feel. which was originally, originally wrote it on like Ableton and it was kind of more dancey vibe, uh, had a more dance vibe to it. But recently uh, on this tour, we've just started playing it live for the first time and we play it um, acoustic. And it's, um, and I've been really enjoying it. A, because I don't believe that a song that you've done in a studio should sound exactly like it is recorded live because otherwise you may as well i don't know you like if you're coming to a live gig you want to see something different you want to sound different and you kind of want it to be a bit different every time and if i wanted to listen to the record i'd go home and just listen to the record um and so yeah i know for me i like i like doing oh and then because it is just acoustic and piano um the crowd have been getting into it. We've only been doing that for the last week. And I take my, my uh, in-ears out so I can actually hear the room properly and stuff. And so it's a nice um, respite in the set for, for, I think, for us and for the crowd. Yeah.